Welcome back. I'm your host, R.R. Slugger, and you're watching as an elderly slug attempts to understand CCBS. Typically on this- oh, okay, I'll stop. Typically on this channel, I try to cover topics that I may have some knowledge in worth sharing, though not always. For example, obviously everyone here is already well aware of the Loader Dozer box art depicting a rock monster with a photoshopped hand, for some reason, even though the front depicts the mold we would receive, like, psh, duh. Well, today's discussion is going to be one of those. It's my impression that the majority of viewers out there have a greater understanding of CCBS than I do, so please be patient with me. I am but a humble elderly slug trying to play catch up with a building system that both lived and died during my LEGO Dark Age. And who knows, maybe there are some other slugs like me approaching this subject for the very first time today. Regardless of your background, I hope you can either learn with me or derive some amusement from my ignorance. Either way, I'll try to be as edutaining as possible. Let's begin. First off, the acronym. I think I finally have it figured out. CCBS stands for the Character and Creature Building System. Not bad, eh? In addition to this acronym, we must also familiarize ourselves with a portmanteau. Constructible action figures, or rather, construction figures, are at the heart of our discussion today. By the way, I have no idea how official these naming schemes are. CCBS at least appears to be a codification given to the building system, perhaps even coined by the LEGO group themselves. Construction, however, seems to have been retroactively applied to anything Technic related that looks like an action figure, leading me to wonder if this is just a community name for something akin to juniorization. Anyways, CCBS was first introduced in and around 2011 with the Hero Factory series, though the Ben 10 figures predate them, should they qualify. CCBS would effectively be retired seven years later with the last of the Star Wars construction figures. But what is CCBS? To be honest, this is a question I've had since getting back into LEGO a couple years ago and hearing the term thrown around. What truly defines CCBS as being different from Bionicles of yesteryear? To help explore this concept, I picked up my first Bionicle from the ill-fated Generation 2, Kopaka, Master of Ice. Firstly, let me mention that my set is incomplete. It's missing a couple of stickers and another one of these ice shard elements, but otherwise this figure should be as good an entry point as any. I intentionally avoided doing any extensive research before building him because I wanted to see if I could identify on my own what CCBS was through the build experience itself. I always hear folks complain about CCBS parts online and I wanted to see what they meant by that. I'll be honest, upon completion, I felt like I was still no closer to understanding CCBS than when I started. What were these horrible CCBS parts that folks were talking about? To me, this was a Bionicle like any other I had built before. The body pieces were clearly body pieces, the feet clearly feet, and the limbs were all interchangeable. Why all the hullabaloo? In fact, I thought this was a better Bionicle than those Metru, Hordika, and Anika builds that had turned me off the franchise completely. Not only was the build far more complex with a greater number of pieces, but we finally had a return to diverse gear functions and respect paid to the importance of the masks. In my opinion, Bionicle had been woefully lacking in this department ever since Metro Nui, where every Toa had the same bog standard gear functions. Mass gimmicks and collectability were completely gone too. Sadly, it only got worse from there, so I'm overjoyed to see such a return to form within Kopaka here. With improved gear functions and a great dislodging mask play feature, to me, Kopaka feels more authentic to Bionicle's core than a lot of other sets from Generation 1. These two feel much more similar than these two. Mask collecting has been considered here as well, with Kopaka also including his golden mask. I can understand the decision to skip the mask packs this time around, so I think this was a great compromise. Not only that, but the skull spider enemy within the set echoes the mighty Borok with its ability to latch onto Kopaka's face and assume direct control. 
Now, with all that being said, I don't think I'm completely obtuse here. I could definitely tell something was different about Generation 2 Kopaka, I just couldn't quite place it while building him. What was this new system in play? I certainly had noticed the interesting way these armor plates had attached during construction, and how they had left him feeling quite janky as a result. Could this be a part of CCBS? I played around with it for a few more weeks. One thing I did later notice was how the limbs seemed to be using a different math than most Bionicles that had come before. Typically, I was used to seeing arms and legs constructed out of parts that had either two ball joints or two cup joints, whereas CCBS Kopaka here seemed to have one of each on every limb piece. This didn't make him incompatible with older Bionicles, but I could see how this would be annoying to work around for fans of the traditional system. The seemingly one-way style of limb building seemed so familiar to me, but I couldn't quite put my finger on it yet. I picked up a bunch of extra pieces to further explore what CCBS might be, and at this point I'm sure die-hard fans of Bionicle are tearing their hair out in frustration at my intentional ignorance. Alright, alright, fine, I'll, I'll look it up. Ah, CCBS is a system defined by three layers, bones, shells, and armor. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. This feels like a logical next step for construction figures, a system within a system. Are there limitations? You betcha. In order to take a closer look at them, we're going to need the help of a friend. CCBS Kopaka might harken back to the good old days of Bionicle in 2001 in many ways, but visually he is far more similar to Kopaka Nuva, of which I had growing up. But finding all those pieces now would take longer than making the rest of this video, so we're going to use the next best thing. Now, it's no accident that I brought Galador into the conversation, as CCBS and Galador have a ton of things in common. And I'm not talking about financial ruination, let me elaborate. While Galador possesses part quality that Bionicle could only fantasize about, the design of the limbs in both themes share many similarities. Remember that one-way style construction method I mentioned earlier? That's Galador! Nearly every limb piece in that theme features a ratcheted Technic pin on one end and a receptacle for said pin on the other. This can be limiting in many ways, but Galador also included several intermediate connectors to help break up the flow. Galador also featured a vast array of limb variety, and that might be where it has CCBS beat. From furry to flesh, to armored and robotic, Galador gave us so many great textures to work with before being sadly cut short, killing the potential of numerous recolors. In contrast, I find that CCBS has a nearly opposite problem. While constructing Kopaka, I had a burst of excitement when I realized the brilliance of this shell system. Imagine the potential textures you could give your characters with this interchangeable clip-on mechanism without having to remove limbs or build a new character from scratch. In my mind, the possibilities were nearly endless. But in reality, I could not have been further from the truth. When looking up sets that featured CCBS for this video, I was frankly repulsed by how many used the same three tired shell pieces over and over and over. Galador as a series had a lifespan measured in months, and to me best represents missed potential. CCBS, on the other hand, to me represents wasted potential. I, it really pains me to say that, but the character and creature building system should have been so much better, and more varied given that it had over 7 years worth of sets to work with. There is some variety there, to be sure, but to me it feels like the LEGO group throttled the creative potential behind this building system, perhaps in an attempt to avoid another financial disaster like Galador. <laughs> Which turned out great. <clears throat> At the end of the day, I'm not in a position to pass any sort of final judgement on CCBS. I'm not really a Technic builder, and I don't have a vast collection of the stuff. By a stroke of pure luck though, I WAS able to pick up the rest of the Toa, or Masters from that wave. But part of me couldn't shake the feeling that there were still sets that utilized the system better. I took a blind leap into Hero Factory, and I couldn't have been more right. 
Ferno XL towers above the Toa in his design, though I will admit that the cloth cape might be doing some heavy lifting here. Far more surprising to me was Scorpio, probably the most intriguing use of CCBS I've seen in a LEGO set. This one gave me intense Uni vibes from Galador, and they both share a very similar role in how they rethink the systems they were given. I'm not sure if these are cream of the crop Hero Factory offerings or not, but they really impressed me regardless. Overall, I do have a suspicion that CCBS is better suited to one-off toys than the Technic system of yesteryear's Bionicle. That shouldn't constitute avoiding this system altogether, however. It did, after all, bring us some of the best Bionicle designs in over a decade. Yeah, yeah, leave your dislike. Thanks for watching, everyone. Hopefully you gained some amusement or schadenfreude from watching an elderly slug attempt to understand CCBS and succeed? Mm, kind of. Once again, this video was brought to you by the Summer of Slug 2023, and my thanks go out to all of those who helped make it happen. If you want in on the party, check the link in the description. I've been your host, RR Slugger, and I'll see you next time for another video.